G'day guys, welcome back. Do you remember ages ago, probably over a year ago, I did a pour that I called Phoenix Rising. Um, it was kind of a, like a jiggle pour. I'm going to revisit that. Uh, the old one I did was just with Floetrol. I'm going to have a go with my recent pouring medium, the 65% glue and 35% water. So we'll see how that goes. I've got exactly the same colours. Uh, yeah, and uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, I got back from the movies just a little while ago. I uh, went to see It number two with my daughter Christy. Such a long movie, nearly three hours. It really reminded me of Stranger Things. If any of you guys have seen Stranger Things, you know the group of kids that have to go down um, to the um, oh, the upside down and fight the big boogie monster. Yeah, reminded me of that. And look, I got fairy floss, glass from the past. Takes me back to my childhood with the old pink and blue fairy floss or cotton candy. <laughs> I saw it there and I just, I had to have it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get to pouring. So, no silicone oil in this pour. Um, I'm just going to go with these beautiful colours and, and see what happens. I'll show you the consistency. I've mixed this, uh, as I said, 65 to 35. And then I've got one-to-one -one pouring medium to Global Paint. So Global Paint is a soft-bodied paint. It's... Um, Similar to Liquitex Basics, maybe a little bit thinner. But if you're using Liquitex Basics, you could probably start with one to one or maybe one and a half to one, like one and a half pouring medium to one paint and just see how you go. Um, <clears throat> and same with Montmartre, if you're using Montmartre, they're going to be very similar, sort of a one to one. Some colours are going to be a little bit thicker. Now I'm going to do probably three layers and I'm just going to pour them in so leave myself two-thirds left in the cup if I can so I've got the navy and the turquoise and then I've separated my cools from my warms with the white because you know what blue and yellow do don't you they go green so I will probably get a little bit of green it's a bit too thick still that red um, the yellow I've mixed up sort of half cool yellow and warm yellow to kind of get a really pale orangey sort of a yellow um, it kind of matches Liquitex Basics cadmium deep hue this one here is warm red. It's traditionally a thicker kind of a paint. So I thought I'd put extra water in, but it still needed a little bit more. You can't really tell until you start pouring and then you can feel the resistance. That one feels a touch thick too, but that's all right. With this type of pour, you're better off having them slightly thicker than too thin just means that they keep their beautiful shape better when you pour. All right, last one. Now this is a 30 centimetre by 40 centimetre canvas. It's one of my usual sizes. I like this one and I like the 30 by 60. So in inches, this is 12 by 16 inch and the longer one is um, 12 by 24 inch is the other size that I like to do. And if this works, if I'm happy with it, I may progress to a bigger one. Look at those colours in there together, aren't they? Beautiful. So pretty. And, um, oh, my white today is the um, Montmartre. Uh, I won't be using Global White anymore until they can uh, fix their white. The navy is deep space and this turquoisey one is called coastal turquoise. It's basically turquoise with a little bit of blue in it just to sort of take away a bit of the green tone, I guess. So this is the white Montmartre and I've had really good success with that. I've only done a few pours with it, 
but I've had no split paint so I'll be using the white Montmartre and I'm happy to use it with the global paints I do like the global paints I just don't like the global white at the moment when I first started pouring I used global and uh, I didn't have a problem with the white it's just recently the last few months I, I don't know what they've done to it but it's split so I'm going to move away from it until they rectify the problem hopefully they will okay that's all my paint in how pretty does that look so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is now there's lots of different ways you can pour your cup out you can do a ring pour you can just do a straight pour I'm going to do a jiggle pour I like to call it a jiggle pour so I'm just going to pour into the center of the canvas but I'm just going to very carefully jiggle the, the jug up and down <clears throat> try not for too much because every time you move the jug you know it tends to mix so got to be careful not to do too much but that's that's it I wasn't quite straight with my jug before but I, <laughs> I am now <clears throat> excuse me frog in my throat so I've layered the colors three times as you saw which means I get lots of color difference coming through in my rings a little bit of green happening there where the blue and the yellow are obviously mixing Quite sure how high I want to hold this jug. I think I'm just going to hold it up relatively high and just do my little jiggles. Jiggle, jiggle. They don't need to be big movements, they're just up and down rather than round and round. When you notice that your paint is starting to get too muddy, you can stop. I've got a lot of paint here. I've mixed up the same amount of paint that I would normally mix up for a flip cup pour. So I've got 600 grams of mixed paint. So on one side, the colors look brighter. And on the other side, my right, your left, they look a little bit more sort of muddied, don't they? Now I'm going to wait for this navy to come out and then I'm going to stop. And here it comes. Let's see if I can end with a nice little catch of the drips there oh look at that how pretty is that rainbow in there okay very very pretty let's give it a quick torch to pop some bubbles now because I've got so much paint on the surface I can sort of already see that this half here is kind of more muddy than this half and this down here, see that is more colourful than this half here. That's brighter, that's more blurry, sort of that half's more blurry, this is brighter. So if you wanted to, you could take off that whole section there first. Um, <clears throat> what I think I'll do is I'll turn it around and while I've still got the most amount of paint on the surface here, I'm going to tilt that way because that's the side that I like the most. So we'll tilt that way first. I'm 
got a weird little line happening there. I hope I don't lose all that orange. I probably will. You can always go back and tilt, you know, if you think, oh, there's too much blue there, you can always go back and tilt some of that off. The paint's rolling over itself here. I'm going to try, if I can, and keep some of that orange. Um, I'm just going to have to go for it because I can't leave all this paint on the surface. It's too much paint to leave. Doesn't that look pretty? Let me just get this paint off my glove here. Wow, look at that. Love that. If when you're doing your jiggles, if you do bigger jiggles, um, you'd get sort of wider rings. I'm just going to find my tweezers. There's something in there. Oh, where are you? can't reach. There it is. It's probably just a little bit of unmixed paint. But it's enough to, um, yeah, I don't know. It's enough to ruin my design. You can try and sort of straighten your lines again. If you do have an accident, you can get a little bamboo skewer and try and, you know, straighten your lines a little bit. Never mind, maybe that will get tilted off. All right, let's go for the next corner. And again, trying to keep some of this orange here because it's really pretty. What is that in there? Oh, that's the blunt end. That's not going to help, is it? Mm, I'll just leave it for now. I might have to. That's going to bug me. It's going to have to go. Yeah, it's gone. Obviously a blob of paint. Okay. That's looking very pretty. It's got a lot of blue in the middle, though. Maybe I should try and, maybe I should start with red because I started with the blues. Maybe I should start with the reds if I want to really red center. I'll do that next time. Start with reds. This paint's going to roll over itself and I'm going to lose that orange corner. Well, it's not exactly like what I had hoped for. I really lost that, all that beautiful orangey red tones. It's just, it's just blue and yellow now, isn't it? So I'm going to move it into the center a little bit. And then I'm going to see if I can move some of this blue down and open up some of this color up here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave this corner and I'm going to go off that way. You don't have to center everything. If it's your paw, you can do what you want. Oh, look, there's something else in here. Hmm. I think I'm just going to leave it because that's bugging me that that piece in there that's not moving I obviously didn't mix my paint very well yeah I don't, I don't mind it uh, 
yeah, as I said, I would have liked some more of the orange to come through. But um, <laughs> I've tipped it all off. Look at it. It's all here on the sides. It's all gone. Um, yeah. Just trying to think how I could keep that orange. Apart from starting with the orange instead of the blue, that, that might help. I'm just going to take some of this orange and put it over here on this corner. It's good for something. So as far as the Phoenix Rising goes, it's it's similar. Um, it's I think my other one when I did my jiggles, I did them a lot bigger, so I got thicker kind of fingers, so to speak, more like these here. I think if I tilted this down, these would probably open up, but because I've got that blob in there, it's just going to ruin it if I start opening it up. I need something dark on this corner. There we go, that's a good match. So what do you think? It's pretty. I mean, it's, it's you know, really stripy and striated and all that. And we've got the navy down here. I do like my navy. It's not centred. It doesn't have to be centred. I've got that little bit of red through there and I've got a little bit of red through there. Um, yeah, but the rest of it's kind of lost. Now, I'm not going to torch it again because I don't want bubbles to pop and little black holes to show up. I'm happy with it how it is. Um, but I'm going to, I'll do another one where maybe I can use less paint because look at it all. Less paint, that might work actually. I'll try with less paint. Mm. All right, let me take you down for a close up. Still really pretty though. Look at that. So pretty. Let's turn my light off. There we go. Look at those stripes. Look at that. Aren't they gorgeous? So pretty. And as I said earlier, if I'd made my little jiggles bigger, these stripes would be wider. So that, they'd sort of look a bit more like that. These ones have been stretched out more, so you can see they're kind of puffy at the ends there. I've got that cute little corner. Look at the sides. And the stripes run down the sides there. And up to this little corner here, we've got a little bit of red showing. And back to over here. This is my favourite. Look at all those stripes. The other thing I wanted to do was a waterfall pour, you know, where you, um, well, that's what I call it anyway, where I tilt the canvas up and I pour from up on the top and the paint runs down. I like that effect too. So I'm going to have a play with these same colours um, and I'll try a few different techniques with these colours and just show you the results. So you can have a go as well. So this was a little jiggle pour just in the centre and then tilted both ways. The next one I'll do is the waterfall and I'll just pour from, um, I'll do a jiggle one again, but from up the top here, sort of up here and tilt the canvas and, and the paint will just run down. So I'll do that. All right, there it is. Very pretty, like this one. And uh, thanks for watching again. <laughs> I will definitely see you for the next pour. Bye for now.